Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the 8th Yi2 tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing the model class. And to this point, it's pretty much just been theory. We're going to actually write some code here and just kind of get some hands-on. As you can see, there's a lot of subclasses of this thing, um, like active, re base active record, etc., etc. I mean, there's model class. I cannot understate how important this is to the whole framework itself. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, if you look at what all is in this thing. I mean, it's just tons and tons of stuff. So what's super important is understanding what the model class is, why it exists, and how to work with it. And we've kind of gone over what it is. I think we've actually beaten that to death. But once again, a model is a representation of the data. You've seen where we've gone into GI, and we've actually generated these model classes. And you can see how, you know, it's just gobbledygook at this point. We don't really know what it is. So like, let's look at categories here. Categories is a pretty simple table. Let's actually select this thing. It's just got a primary key and a name. And in our model, we can see it's an active record, which is an indicator that, hey, warning sign, this goes to the database. And it's got some rules in here, meaning this is how the model knows how to talk to the database. It's all these rules really mean, is the ID categories is required, it's an integer, it's unique. Hmm. You know what, just out of curiosity here, I wanna try something. I actually, um, if you followed up on a previous tutorials, I uh, wiped my computer hard drive and I had to start over uh, because I installed a new version of Windows and everything. Yeah, see there is a difference, so let me overwrite that. All right. Now, let the tutorial commence. All right, so let's go back out here. Let's look at this bad boy again. Okay, I saw that stuff with the primary key and I thought, now wait a minute, why is that there? And the reason why is because when I was in here, I forgot to flag this as auto increment the first time I did this. And I better double check that real quick. Okay, yeah, it's at auto increment. Otherwise, what would have happened is we'd have to fill in that primary key, which we obviously don't want to do. So, lesson learned. If you see the primary key in the rules, you might want to go back out to key and regenerate, just like I did. All right, so we've got a table name. This tells us what table this interface is with. Um, we've got a rule set that tells us what we can and cannot modify. And we've got attribute labels. And these are displayed in forms, like you got the ID categories and the names, etc. Now, when I say displayed in a form, what we're really talking about here is here. You can see these things. These are the labels that would be in the pets class. All right, so we're going to work with this because it's very simple, very easy. So we're going to go out to our test route right here. Ta da! And we're going to make it so that when we click that, some magic happens and some table or some records are created in our little database here. So let's go out here and we'll say All right, now you notice the first thing it does is it does this fully qualified path. And if you don't want that, if you want the simpler way, you just include this at the top of the file. And then you can get rid of all that nonsense there. Just make it much easier. And we're going to say model name equal cats. And we're going to say, we're just going to save this to the database. This is like the simplest thing in the world to do with a model. So we're making a blank model. We're setting the parameter of name and we're going to say cats. And then we're just going to save it to the database. Now what this does is if it has a primary key set, it will generate the update code. But if there's no primary key, like if it's set to null, it'll actually generate the insert SQL code. So that's the difference here. So you've seen on, like, let's go into uh, right here, like model load. This is for the create, right? It's going to load it and then save, update, same thing, model load, is because in that post, that primary key will be in there as a parameter. So we're not messing around with any of that. We're just going to focus on this. So model equal new categories, model name equal cats, and then model save. 
Make sure we save the file, otherwise dramatically nothing will happen here. Alright, doesn't look like much happened, but under the hood, when we go here, we have cats. So let's go ahead and let's make dogs. And let's, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy and paste. Model 2, whoopsie. And dish, that would have been funny. So we're going to have cats already in there, dogs and fish, right? So let's click this. And we're going to go here and bang. Go here, refresh our database, and we have cats, dogs, and fish. Pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. Now, what happens if we want to change that? Like instead of fish, we want birds. We're going to say, and sometimes IntelliSense works on this computer and sometimes it doesn't. We're going to go find one. Whoops. And when in doubt, you can always kind of cheat and go down here and actually look at the code and find model. They're just doing find one and then the ID. So let's go back up here and make sure we're doing this. Yep, find one. And the ID, what was the ID of that thing? Three. So we're just going to do that. And we're going to name fish to birds. Because I'm not a big fan of fish. The fish are just kind of weird and creepy and they just, you know, float around. Gonna do that, and then we'll go out to our database. I really gotta move these icons around, it drives me crazy. So watch fish, when I refresh this, this should flip to birds. Yep, there it is, it's now birds. Now, what happens if you don't know the primary key and you still wanna do this? You go find, TikTok, come on, IntelliSense. It's because I've got all these other projects in here. That's why it does that. We'll see where. There we go. This is what I was looking for here. Where, condition, and params. So we're going to say where, and say name equal colon name. And params is actually an array. Whoopsie. Seems kind of convoluted, but that's actually the syntax on how to do this. I hope, otherwise this is going to be kind of embarrassing because, yeah, syntax highlighting was still kind of screwing up on me. So we're going to rename birds to lizards. So what we're doing here is we're saying categories find where name equal, and notice this semicolon here. Or, see, sorry, the colon. That colon denotes that it's a variable, and the variable is going to be in this array. So we can name this ABC, and as long as it's named ABC over here, it'll still find it. That's called a query parameter, is really all that is. So we could have hard coded it here, but I like doing it over here. That way you have your nice where statement, and then you have your variables, and then you can set your variables however you want them. And then one, because if you don't do the one function, you could actually return multiple records and then you're going to have a hard time because you'll be working with an array instead of a single record. And because we're actually, you know, pulling an object here, we should say if not is null. Oops, not is null. I was thinking of a totally different language other than PHP. If is set. Come on. Yeah, sometimes NetBean IntelliSense isn't the fastest thing in the world. I actually type faster than it does sometimes. All right, so if it is not set, then we're going to say e2, oops, e warning.
record not set. Go ahead and do this. All right, so really all we're doing here, and we can actually get rid of that too, because that's just going to be annoying. We're going to say our model equals categories find where name is, and then we've got a variable. This variable is equal to birds. So we're essentially saying where name equal birds, and we want to find just one record instead of a bunch of them. If the model is null, meaning it hasn't been set, then we're going to issue a warning. Otherwise, we're just going to save it to lizards. All right, click that, and that should now say lizards. And there it is. So what other things can you do with models here? Well, let's play around with one. Let's say, wipe all that out. We're going to do some validation here. We're going to do basic validation. I think we're going to be done with this tutorial because I'm a little beat. Come on, IntelliSense. No? OK, fine. Be that way. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I've got like this monster lightning fast computer and IntelliSense and NetBeans is just so slow. Well, I shouldn't say that. In NetBeans defense, I have multiple websites with multiple versions of Yi, so it's got to kind of figure out where it is and what it's doing and how to do it and all that. There we are. So we're going to make a new pets. Now, if we look at pets, pets is a much more complex class, meaning it's got some things. And one of those is mandatory. So if we look at this, um, you'll see the rules ID category required. And why is that required? Remember how I said if you see a primary key, watch out, red flag? That's because in our database, let's, if we look at pets, we did a foreign key constraint. So you'll see there's pets categories equals the category, you know, ID categories. Um, in case you totally fell asleep through in that tutorial, basically we have this table called categories. And we have a primary key called ID categories. Now in the pets table, we have a key here called ID category, or I shouldn't call it a key, an index. And we are going to point the category, let's say lizards, to this record right here. So in the database, we'll see the number three, but in Yi, you can actually load that and get the name. It's actually pretty slick the way it does it. But to do that, you need what's called a foreign key constraint. So we've already created that in the database here. So. That explains that craziness. So when you see this, go, uh-oh, something's going on here. And then we've just got labels in here. And here's another telltale sign that we have a foreign key constraint. You see this get ID category zero? This has one, meaning it's a one-for-one one relationship. There will be one category in this record. All right, so if that wasn't confusing, hopefully this will kind of confuse you less. So we're going to say model. Not, I don't even remember what's in the model here. Name, description, cost, picture. Okay, so we're going to say name equal, hmm, I need a good name. What is a good name? Sparky. Why not? Name Sparky, model, description, whoops, I cannot spell. Big dog. Now I'm going to uh, purposely screw up here because I, you know, I screw up quite a bit without doing it intentionally. But I'm going to do this intentionally just to show you what happens. So if we say model name, model description, and then model save, and but you notice how this ID category is required. I want to show you what happens. You know, your code's just going to explode. So yeah, PHP compiler cannot use pets because pets name is already in use what oh okay i guess i did screw up unintentionally my bad yeah basically it's because we're already using that namespace this will be the screw up that i actually wanted to show you hold on now you see how there's no error message let's go out to our pets now where is it we hit save but there's nothing there we can refresh all day long 
there's nothing there. So let's go into Yi and see exactly what happened. You see how in the logs, nothing really is going on here. Model not inserted due to validation error. That's a telltale sign. But you notice how it didn't actually throw an error message. It didn't throw anything up on the screen. It didn't really give you any severe indication that something was wrong. So model not inserted due to validation error. That's a quite common error. So let's see how we can fix this. I'm sure you already know because we've talked about this, but I want to show you kind of a little trick here. If model so we're going to do the magic of copy and paste. We're going to say if the model's validated, meaning it's going to go out and it's going to check every field and say, are you what you need to be? And if it is, then we're going to save it. Otherwise, we're going to say ye, whoops, warning, and model. We're going to grab the errors. The errors will be an array. I just like throwing it out in the warning. That way it's just very you know, user friendly, easy to see here. So we're going to go back out here, go back. Hmm. Validated. What? What did I screw up here? I know I screwed something up. Validate. Derp. That's why I always keep the API up handy. And that's why I really love IntelliSense when it works. So what we're saying is if model validate, we're going to validate that model, then save it. If we could not validate, it's going to jump down here and it's going to throw our errors list out there. So let's try that again here. All right, so you see we have a warning down in our log. We can go in there and you can see how warning application, and there it is. ID category cannot be blank. So that is how you would debug validation um, through the debugger. There's a much more user-friendly way of doing that, but that's in a nutshell how we do it. So let's go in here and we're going to say model. I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to grab it. And let's do this. Let's say hmm, dog. Mm Whoopsie. And this should be kind of, you know, self descriptive from what we did earlier here. Whoops. I got to check and see if that was dog and not dogs. Let me look at my category. Yeah, it is dogs. Okay. All right, so and primary key will actually help you with a lot of things, so you don't have to say ID categories or ID dogs or whatever you name your primary key. E auto detects what the primary key is, so you can just say the model primary key. And we should probably put a little bit of logic in here just to you know save us a little bit. That way, if we don't actually have an object here, we can just say, ye warnings. Whoops. There we go. All right, so that looks a little more confusing, but this is actually a little more professionally done. Quotey fingers are unprofessionally. What we're doing is we're grabbing the dog record, and we're saying, you know, if it's not set, then just issue a warning. 
Um, if it is set, however, we're going to actually make a new dog called Sparky. We're going to set the ID categories to the dog primary key. Description big dog, we're going to validate the model and then try to save it. If it can't save, we're going to spit out our warning message here. So let's go here and... All right, let's go out to our database and see what that looks like. Pets. Yeah, I accidentally created two of them because I clicked it. So as you can see, it works. And if we go out here and let's just click this like a dozen more times, we'll have a bunch of dogs in there named Sparky. Yep, see, there you go. So that in a nutshell is how you would work with models. Um, I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and we're going to do much more with models. I just wanted this to be kind of like a model primer to kind of get your feet wet in case you're at home struggling with this. And you're like, how do I find this? How do I do that? How do I set the primary key? Um, let's see, what else should I talk about here? Oh, yeah. Be sure to visit my website, voidrooms.com, for source code for this and other tutorials. I've been very slow to get the source out for this, um, but I wanted to point out two quick things. The site's 100% run off your donations. I don't even put advertisements on my videos. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, visit the Void Realms Facebook group. There's a link to it right out on my website, voidrealms.com, under contact. And there's like almost uh, 400 of us programmers out there, uh, fluent in multiple languages. That's it. Thanks for watching.